Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus. In today's video, I'm going to be working on some Philip Pline flip flops. Let's check them out because they're a little bit on the pricier side of uh, flip flops and everything. So let's see what makes them so pricey for a flip flop. All right, everyone, so thank you again for joining us. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be working on these Philip Pine flip-flops. And not, I mean, we'll kind of, we're gonna be resoling them, putting new heels on and kind of refurbishing all the uppers and stuff. Now, one thing I'd like to point out, when you get a flip-flop that has a little bit of a heel, even if it's a little bit or a lot, most of these flip-flops don't have a shank of any kind inside here. And that's obviously because it's a flip-flop. It's supposed to flop around, easy to slip on and slide on. And so a lot of times what happens is you can see that little indentation where the leather is kind of like collapsing right there. It's a very common thing. Um, you know, just keep that in mind that most of these flip-flops do not have a shank in them. I mean, they're pretty flexible right there. So if it had a shank in there, there's nothing, you know, there's no way you can bend it there. But you know that's just the way they are so i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can carefully try to pull off this uh top lift heel the little rubber section here without using too much pliers because the pliers they need some form of resistance and at least to start up the prying process i'm gonna use my little heel pry there and go from there now from first go you can see that that rubber heel it rips easy. Usually with a uh, little bit of a better heel, I guess we'll put it that way, it won't, it wouldn't rip as easily. Even in the thin areas, it would still try to pull apart a little more nicely and everything from the top lift. They did use some nice glue though, I'll, I will say that for sure. It's a little bit uh, stronger glue than some, some brands I've seen out there leather uh, heel base it looks like too that's definitely a plus now I'm gonna see how well that heel base it's, well I call it a heel base technically still because it technically is it is just a piece of leather all right looks like it's coming off pretty pretty okay Yeah, it definitely seems to be coming off pretty good. We'll probably replace that anyways too, this piece of leather, but I still want to try to save as much of it as I can, at least for tracing it out and making making sure we get the same thickness and everything for this gentleman. So, pretty good. Just It's a chunk of leather, but we're still going to categorize it as a heel base um, just for the heck of it, even though I'm going to be replacing it. I'll still write on here that it's for the uh, right foot. So I'll put a big R on there. All right, now time for the sole. Let's see how how well this is going to cooperate. My biggest question is this uh, insole part or the footbed or whatever you want to call it. This one has such a thick coating on it that it's very questionable to me whether it's a leather or if it's a fiberboard material or maybe if it's just a really thin layer over top of leather. So we're gonna figure that out right now. I don't wanna use any kind of solvents on this just as a precaution. All right, everyone. So I was able to start taking this apart. Uh, my camera kind of acted out on me quite a bit. But uh, so yeah, it does definitely look like this uh, footbed is what it'd be called is a leather. So is the sole and everything. It's all leather. They just used a really thick finish on there. It's sometimes hard to tell just because of thick finishes. I could definitely look from the side, but the sides are so beaten up that it's it makes it just just a little bit more questionable. I, I mean, if I wasn't taking apart this uh, flip-flop, I would say that it isn't all leather, but uh, there are some cases where you can get tricked pretty easily. So right here, you can see this little strap right there showing through, right there. 
This is the tow bar strap right there, so I have to make sure that that's secured before I really do much else. I mean, thankfully it's off the sole and everything. Right now I'm coming across that issue with these back straps right there that uh, they're really glued down. They definitely use a good glue in here, thankfully, but uh, makes my life just, just a little bit uh, more work, in other words, that I have to do. So this gentleman, thankfully, he uh, he was wearing these flip-flops mainly around the house and everything like that, not so much you know, to the pool or to the beach. He probably wore them a few times to the beach because I do see the sand, but definitely don't see or feel any kind of salts or anything in it. So the leather isn't damaged, so we're gonna do some light cleaning on it. We don't necessarily have to do a deep wash on these guys. But now that I know that they're leather, I could use a little bit of solvents makes my life just that much more easier to be able to take these apart, thankfully. But yeah, that's one issue that we do come across with flip-flops when people do resole them. And most flip-flops aren't worth getting resold. There's only a handful of them that uh, need to be resold or can be or are worth resoling. These ones are definitely worth it. All right, so now that I've got the sole off and everything, you can see that this uh, leather strap up here, it is a two-ply. Most companies I come across, they're a single-ply, meaning that it's only one strip of leather. Well, this is a few strips of leather basically stitched together. You can see some of that stitching right there. And so on the inside, we can see how it splits. Thankfully, it looks like they use at least some nylon strapping right here. Nylon is actually very useful because it doesn't stretch. Leather stretches very easily, um, especially when they're... Sorry, I keep getting interrupted here. But... Uh, yeah, so, uh, where was I? Um, I already forgot with these interruptions. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and let the uh, solvent dry out. It's, it's drying out pretty quickly. Uh, the adhesive is a little bit tacky still from the factory still so i'm gonna let that dry while i'm taking apart the other sole and everything once it's all dry then just like this area here i'm gonna make sure everything's tacked down nicely um use a different adhesive i try to avoid using contact cement on these areas just because contact cement still will give out under heat and moisture a little bit if i use something a little bit stronger um you know then that kind of secures it it's it's almost like a super glue that's designed for leathers that we use and so it has a tendency to harden so we never glue soles with it only like certain small areas like this so that way if he does wear them to the pool or to the beach or anything like that it gets too hot like he leaves them in his car or whatever that is not going to deactivate and then the next time he puts it on that toe bar right there just pops out that's my biggest concern if other areas of the sole kind of start coming undone a little bit from the contact cement that's an easy fix and also it's not uh, as troublesome as say while you're walking down the street the tow bar pops out that's more of a problem so i'm gonna go ahead and let that uh, dry and uh, we'll continue on all right everyone so i've gone ahead and secured all the straps um, and uh, i'll let you see right here maybe you can see a little bit of that shininess there gone ahead and all around the perimeters as well just to add a little layer of security i've sanded up the old glue got off as much as i can without taking too much of the sole off basically. Uh, we are using a JR sole. This is a thinner one here that we're putting on. I've already got these glued up and the other shoe, but uh, at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and glue everything together. There's not much uh, fancy stuff going on here. So once it's uh, ready to stick, we'll go from there and I'll show you flip-flops are a little bit more, more of a handful, in other words, to glue together than, than say a regular shoe or boot.
So we're going to be using some Saphir Universal right now to kind of get everything reconditioned. As you saw, gone ahead and used a alcohol-based dye for the sole because it was more of a black color. And uh, after applying a dye, it's very, very important to condition even though these are pit tanned leather soles that we're using so they're really really good but the surface area still is a good idea to go through with the conditioner plus this is the other thing it'll help remove a little bit of too much extra that may be on there so i've done the same thing with the fo uh, footbed inside um touched it up with some black dye and uh yeah i'm going conditioned that up as well because it was a leather footbed on these two for sure and I mean technically usually the footbeds we don't mess with all that much all right so we got everything conditioned up nicely with that Saphir Universal now some people might be talking about why are you using Saphir Universal why are you using Renovateur um, they're different if you're wondering about that uh, especially for those of you who are familiar with the Saphir products so if you're comparing, say, the Universal Cream here, which usually comes in a smaller container, this is the large bottle here, it's got your main coil, it's got your lanolin in there, but the mixtures are different than the Renovateur. It's got wax in there as well, and the Renovateur has more waxes, so if you were to pick just one product to use on your footwear, you would use Renovateur, and then on bags and belts and everything, you'd use the Universal. However, because we are using multiple products, like in this case, we're using the Saphir, the Saphir uh, Beauty De Cure Seraphin Cream to give it some more pigment and a thicker wax coat. The pigmented cream polishes have more wax in them than the Universal or the Renovateur. Now, between the Renovateur and the Universal, um, the Renovateur does have more waxes as well in it and everything. And so different consistencies may have the same ingredients, but it's not the same quantities. And I see these posts in some of the shoe enthusiast groups and everything. And so I thought I'd mention that as well. Now, I'm just applying that basically to the bottom of the sole. I don't really need to do too much with the uppers um, just because there's not much color restoration needed, not much wax. I'll go through just very, very lightly. I, I don't even think I'm really going to apply a thick coat as far as like the footbed itself i don't think uh i don't think it's a good idea to really apply a pigmented cream polish to that now we did use a dye but it's alcohol based so that means it's i guess i might have to use just a tiny tiny smidge here but uh we do use an alcohol based dye which soaked in really nicely and then we conditioned it so the only thing is that i'm going to need to make sure to buff it up on the machines and all that and so at this stage, I'm going to let this sit and dry for a little while and uh, then take it over to the buffer, start buffing it all up and uh, do one last thing, which is waterproof them. So let me go ahead and uh, get that buffed up and I'll let you guys see what kind of waterproofer I like to use, especially on something like this here. So we'll see you back in just a little bit. All right, everyone. Had to hang these up to make sure that everything's drying nicely on them and stuff. I did use a little bit of a spray dye just to even it up a tad bit. Um, obviously, it's the sole, so it's going to wear out and stuff. Uh, that JR logo is a little bit darker after the alcohol-based dye, which tends to happen frequently. But, yeah. Turned out pretty good looking and stuff. So, if you're ever wondering as far as products to use obviously this is what we would consider a smooth leather still even though it's uh, got a little bit of a uh, like texture to it and everything but comparing it to say suede new buck oiled leather this one still falls into the category of sw of smooth so using creams and conditioners works out great um, but definitely there's a difference between different types i mean this is going to restore the color best uh, and introduce more waxes than this stuff or the renovateur and everything uh, where the wax is going to be a little more transparent and going to make it shine more but we're not doing waxes on this this is this is not a dress shoe okay it's a flip-flop all right so as far as the waterproofer i like to use it's the uh, tarago nano protector it's uh it's a little bit of a stronger waterproofer but for this gentleman it's definitely going to be very important because i know he's got a hot tub and he wears these around the house and everything and so he's gonna 
he's gonna want to be able to slip these on when he gets out of the hot tub or something and so we want to make sure we add a layer of protection now the jr soles do very well with uh being water resistant however you know adding an extra layer of protection does not hurt i'm going to do a little bit of a thick coat there and then just across there now obviously you want to do this in a ventilated area if you're waterproofing your flip-flops or whatever else but any kind of leather goods is good to waterproof so i'm going to hang this up to dry and uh yeah see that jr sold does not want to even try to absorb that tarago nano where everything else just soaked it right up i might add a second quick coat as well on the tops here okay and then definitely important on that footbed there for him let these dry for a little bit and uh yeah they're they're pretty much done i have to take some photos and stuff but hope you guys enjoyed the video i'm gonna definitely do a cash or trash episode on these if you want to check that out um usually the recraft video comes up first then the cash or trash episode so if you're wondering especially if you watch the end and you watch the whole thing oh, there's a little bit of clipping that needs to be done with some threads here but if you watch to the very end you gotta understand this is a luxury flip-flop it's a little bit on the pricier side for any kind of flip-flops it's more expensive than some shoes and boots some people get as well and so comparing it to other flip-flops you can't quite compare it we, can, we gotta kind of compare it to other flip-flops in the same category and stuff now personally would i own a pair of these if i have the money yes if uh in my case i'm not uh, somebody that can splurge on a pair of 700 plus dollar pair of flip-flops you know then no i'm not gonna set money aside just for the flip-flop and everything like that it's uh at the end of the day it's a flip-flop and everything and it it comes with great leathers uh great materials it's nice and sturdy compared to you know obviously cheap flip-flops that are designed to be worn out and tossed this one is designed a little bit better to be at least somewhat repairable to a certain extent actually to a pretty great extent considering that it's a leather sole and everything like that a rubber top lift everything was is repairable and replaceable on these so if you're looking at other flip-flops in the same price category i would personally say yes it's a cash but for the price you're you're gonna definitely find other flip-flops that are a little more feel a little bit better as far as when you spend the money on it this gentleman is uh big into the philip pline brand anyways he loves their stuff and they do great things but uh not everyone's gonna be willing to spend the prices on it and everything and if you are great we'll be able to take care of them for you if you'd like we could do resoles do all sorts of different things this one we just kind of kept more of original black for him and stuff and you know but in that same price category these are cash for sure for sure compared to some of the things i've seen from other companies that are charging the same maybe a hundred bucks less hundred bucks more uh give or take we're gonna say ballpark estimate of something that's between 600 to maybe 900 dollars um if we were to give that ballpark estimate these here are cash compared compared to a lot of other ones so i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions or comments leave them down below preferably the shorter questions longer questions we have a chat on our website that we started up um so there's a little icon in the bottom of the screen i get notifications to my phone please know you know just chats in other words it's it, legitimate questions <laughs> otherwise i have to answer those during the day at the shop or you can always message us on facebook or instagram those are pretty quick our email address does get or our emails do get pretty piled up with a lot of spam and everything else so it takes a little while to sift through it all um or otherwise swing on by if you're local or give us a call but all the links are in the description below for our website cobblersplus.com facebook it's just cobblers plus instagram it's cobblers plus co and check out our tiktok too we're on there as well at cobblers plus as well so gotta start posting more frequently on there but yeah and uh for those of you who may have not known jr leather soles is a premium grade leather obviously um these flip-flops were well worth it he's a good customer of ours too um as well and he's always got interesting jobs and projects one of which you guys will 
possibly see down the road if I get a video edited for it. But um, for him, it's definitely worth doing the JR soles on these flip flops, especially. But JR did go out of business. Then it got the recipe got bought up by another company. So JR is going to return, but under a little bit of a different name. It's going to say JR, just like it is, but underneath by Calgar as well. So just as a heads up. Um, but for now, I've got some JR soles left over. It's limited, and some of them are already, you know, some of them are already taken, basically. So. Hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon to be notified when the cash or trash episode is out because it'll be like a couple of days about two to three days after the recraft video so we'll see you next time